Hey, welcome back. This is Mike from Digital Offensive. You're watching my Path to OSP. Today is day two of my labs. I'm actually going to day three about now uh, with the time difference and things like that and whenever I signed up uh, a couple nights ago. But either way, uh, some progress today, right? So I got through a couple more labs. Um, going back through the PDFs and the videos, uh, one thing I remembered with them is as you're doing the exercises, you're going to come across a lot of the low hanging fruit boxes, the easy compromise boxes. And those labs will actually gradually uh, help you build up the, the scripts or the tools or the enumeration that you need to get those low hanging fruit. So make sure that you don't skip that stuff and jump right in. Um, going through that material is tedious, boring, I know. Do it. Get it done. Don't be on day 90 or whatever your end date is and be like, crap, I didn't get the labs done. I can't get my five points. And then start going through and be like, oh man, if I knew this then, I could have had this box or I could have done that. Uh, a lot of regret, right? You don't want to have that and you don't want to be coming back a second time, third time, fourth time if you don't have to, right? If you're coming back, you want to be coming back because for some reason you didn't pass the test and now you're ready to take the test to do it again, right? You don't want to be spending $600 every couple of months or spending all the extra money. Take the time now to understand it, dig in deep. Uh, with that being said too, uh, I see a lot of posts on my YouTube channel and other places, uh, the OSCP Facebook page and things like that, about people that want to become security professionals, want to learn uh, learn and take the OSCP. In my opinion, um, being a hacker takes a certain mindset. And I'm not saying you can't be a hacker without this mindset, but a hacker's mindset, you, you want to learn, you want to dig deep, you want to understand how things work. You're not just downloading Metasploit or downloading that payload and executing that payload. You understand how that payload works. You're able to explain the process from enumeration through compromise in a detailed manner because you understand how it works. Um, in my career, I have been doing this now for close to 15 years, give or take, right? Uh, between healthcare and uh, public sector and things like that. And I've seen many different textures come and go. I've hired many, I've let some go and things like that. And the common thing I see throughout the, the cycle is those that have that mentality of a true hacker are the ones that stay the longest or the ones that end up leaving us for the next best job because they're highly sought after, they're highly skilled um, versus those that got into the field because they know how to run some tools. They took a couple of these lower certifications and they're, they're building up their profile. Um, people can learn that methodology, they can get that mindset uh, some people don't get that mindset till later on. Uh, it takes something to kick in and get them motivated to do that. Um, but we can teach you um, how to use the tools. We can uh, help explain to you why things work. We can show you the methodologies. And it's up to you to really take that and go further with that. Same thing with the OSP. That's one of the good things about the OSP is it, it forces you to get that mindset. It forces you to dig deep and to apply yourself and to understand why something works. Now, don't get me wrong. There is tons in the OCP uh, and even Hack the Box and other things where I'm like, why am I doing this? I'm banging my head against the wall. Things are not working. Uh, things that you normally would see work or don't work because they tweak it, right? They don't want to make it too easy for you. Uh, so they change something. Now you have to figure out what that something is or how to uh, escape something a different way than you're normally escaping things. And, and it'll drive you batty. Don't get me wrong then. In those cases, it's... You definitely need to reach out, right? You need that hit. You need that nudge. We all learn different ways, right? And I'm not saying um, that people can't learn to get into that role, as I said earlier. But it really, it's it's wrapped around how you problem solve, how you troubleshoot things, how you analyze things, and build up from there moving forward. Um, something else today. So another thing I want to tell you is. The whole philosophy, try harder, right? You're constantly digging, you're, you're looking for the answer, you're trying to figure out why things work. Sometimes you can actually Google too hard. Uh, I came across today, um, I was Googling a certain URI in an application, and it actually brought me right to the answer I needed. But on that page was basically someone else's OSCP notes that had majority of the boxes. Um, with all their steps. And OSP is usually cracks down on those, shuts them down, things like that. So I sent that over to them, let them take care of that. Um, it, while those things are helpful to see in case you're stuck, but they're also de uh, they also cause problems, right? They, they kind of ruin it for you. They, they, like 
basically having that full walkthrough really really stops you from learning. So they, they're not good for the general public. Um, I think they're great to have in store so you can go back, reference, and learn. So um, some people out there may feel different about that, right? You may want those walkthroughs. Um, if you rely solely on walkthroughs, you're kind of cheating yourself and not really applying yourself. So while walkthroughs are great, uh, I love doing walkthroughs for people to understand how things work. Um, solely relying on them to gain advantage or, or step up in the process is not helpful. Uh, that's why I think it's great that Hack the Box requires you not to do a walkthrough until the box is retired because then you're not getting points. There's no want to do that box to escalate to the next level. It's only a want to do that box to better yourself, to learn more. Um, some people also ask me to show you my cherry tree notes, right? So I'll show you some of my cherry tree notes and I'll also post some of these scripts over on my blog site and I'll link it below for you. What I won't show you my cherry tree is actually what's under these tabs. Uh, under general tips, I have my OSCP account information and it helps me quickly reference my, my forum information, my, um, my all my account information for the OSCP basically, right? So I'm not constantly going back and forth to my email digging it up. Um, under Burp, um, I had an interesting problem today with Burp. I was enumerating a, a site and I noticed I was kept in this uh, Burp SSL handshake problem. And when I Googled it, it turned out to be an issue with Java and uh, the service name indication and how it's being enforced and how some sites are not properly configured. So that causes this error. So I was able to find a way to disable it and start up Burp uh, in the disabled mode which allowed me to uh, carry out my enumeration on that site. So it basically turned into a little script, so now I can type in burp, dot slash burp, and basically kick off my script, and it'll launch burp in this manner. I don't have to worry about that error message. And I can post this script and post these commands uh, in the channel. Uh, Metasploit today, basically just a little script to start my Metasploit. Um, a lot of times I go to start Metasploit, I forget to st start up Postgres, or Postgres is not running. So this will check if Postgres is running. If it's not running, I'll start Postgres and then I'll start Metasploit in a quiet mode or quick mode. And basically what that does is it disables all that crazy assay at the top of the page. Um, our desktop, uh, basically our desktop is the, just a simple shell script. Basically I added hash bang slash bin bash to the our desktop command that uh, they give you to connect to your Windows 7 box for uh, the lab purposes and buffer overflow development. So to run that, you just type in dot slash win uh, dot sh and that runs that script and automatically connects you to your R desktop session. Under labs, uh, I have all my labs I've currently worked on. I am kind of slacking on my labs. Uh, it's kind of, it's as I said earlier on, it's the tedious part of the, the thing, um, but you need to get through them. Uh, other networks, these are networks that are not defined as public, admin, or um, IT. Um, so there's a few boxes in there that are hackable that may give you some additional information. Um, public networks, these are the IPs that are generally available to everyone. Uh, I think there's about 30 to 40 IPs in that range. Uh, this is where you really need to do a lot of your post enumeration because you're gonna find stuff that unlocks other networks, you're gonna find stuff that unlocks other boxes, hints to other boxes. Um, IT network, uh, last time around I unlocked the IT network. Um, I wasn't sure what box I was unlocking when I supplied the secret um, back then, and I ended up unlocking the IT network. Uh, I have not got to the admin network yet, so that's on my list of things to do. Uh, as far as uh, advancements and compromises, I have a box and I have compromised. Hopefully I'll get a second box compromised uh, later tonight, we'll see. Um, tomorrow I plan to go out and do some hunting, so I won't be doing a lot of uh, hack the box in the morning. But maybe tomorrow night or Sunday, I'll get some more Hack the Box, uh, not to hack, pack, hack the Box, OSCP going. And we'll go from there. Um, I'll link these scripts into my blog or into the YouTube channel. Um, I've been answering as many questions as I can on the YouTube channel. If you're on the OSCP and you're currently working the last, feel free to befriend me. Uh, my number is uh, OS26863, I believe it is. Uh, you can find me on there. Uh, friend me on there if you want. Um, uh, I also have a Slack channel where I'm doing some work with some close friends. Um, we're bouncing ideas off each other, but either way, if you're stuck somewhere, reach out. Um, I'll give you a hint, but I'm not going to give you the answer. Uh, that's not the way to do it. 
Uh, make sure if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel, click the like button, uh, click the bell to be reminded when videos are posted. As I said, I'm going to try to keep these daily uh, blogs going uh, throughout the whole 90 days to show some progress here. Uh, it keeps me motivated and keeps you guys informed and maybe I can share some tips and hints that can help you out down the road. Uh, as I said, I still have some other great ideas planned uh, for some future videos. I have off for the next 11 days or something like that. So in between family activities and other things, I hope I'll get some other cool videos shot for you. Um, other than that, just make sure you subscribe, share this video with your friends. Uh, make sure you check out my giveaway. I know you can get the book free online. Uh, that It's called Piracy, but hey, um, it's unethical. So if you guys want a chance for a free book or a $10 Amazon gift card, Make sure you uh, check out my uh, RTFM uh, video and share that out. Um, more people that share us do, the quicker we hit a thousand uh, uh, subscribers. Uh, also, if you're looking for any cool books, check out my store, digitaloffensive.com slash store. I have some books listed out there, but also you can search any one of those ads and, for any of the books you're looking for. And basically, I'll get credit for that through Amazon. Uh, Amazon is an affiliate program I'm using to keep revenue coming in for the blog since uh, YouTube ads really don't pay much uh, and I don't have enough hours of video I've watched yet to keep it going. Um, so with that being said, everyone have a good night and I will see you at the next video. Have a good day.